There are two main reasons why China's economy won't collapse. Yep, that's right. Some of the world's biggest YouTubers are calling for the financial collapse of China, the world's second largest economy. Potentially another ticking time bomb. With some giving exact dates when the whole system will actually blow up. Sure, China does seem to be in a little bit of trouble with the Evergrande crisis holding center stage amongst a distressed real estate sector. Coupled with a continued commitment to a zero COVID policy throughout the country that is restricting the movements of residents, enforcing lockdowns, and choking off supply chains and manufacturing for businesses, even with this all going on, I do believe there is hope for China and that an economic collapse on par with the Great Recession isn't a likely scenario. There are two main reasons why China's economy won't collapse. A bunch of global superpowers operate with a debt to GDP ratio of over 100%, meaning that they have more debt on the books and actual income coming through the door. So let's not pretend that debt is something new or that just because China has a leverage issue, particularly in the real estate sector, that this isn't something that hasn't happened before. We've seen this play out in the United States back in 2008. Hey, there's a bubble. And it's not like Chinese policymakers don't understand what's happening. They introduced the three red line system back in August of 2020 with the aim to improve the financial health of the real estate sector by reducing developers' leverage, improving debt coverage, and increasing liquidity. So they actually see or saw issues forming, and they're trying to massage a soft landing for everyone. With respect to Evergrande, it is an issue, and the word contagion is being thrown out a lot on how massive the debt levels are and how building issues could ripple through into other markets and affect consumer confidence. But state-owned banks in China control the country's property market and don't have to pass legislation to enact change. Meaning China has the option and monetary independence to inject cash where they see fit to attempt to stabilize the situation. With a focus on end user buyers, they can hopefully keep the consumer sentiment from plummeting and also limit the amount of ghost developments that occur and actually push for building completions. Now, Evergrande itself may have to deal with some restructuring on some level, but I'm guessing that policymakers would rather deal with that versus blowing up the entire real estate sector. The other reason for my rosier than most view on China's economy is based on history. The economic response by the US to the Great Depression was far different compared to what happened in 2008 and the Great Recession. Remember, 2008 was actually spurred on by subprime mortgages and the housing bubble collapsing. But when it did, the government backstopped everything, backed up the Brinks truck, pumped liquidity into the system, and slashed interest rates. My point is that no one wants to allow this type of event to happen again, and President Xi Jinping is heading for re-election in October. So wouldn't it make sense on a political level for him to try to right the ship? Interest rates have actually already been lowered to try to spur on consumer spending, and I think there's more room and more to come. When an economy is distressed, the inevitable response now seems to be government intervention. I am inevitable. And a lot of what happens in China is heavily regulated and controlled. So I see a lot of that playing out more in the next few months. I actually think that a boost in manufacturing and a bit of a loosening on the zero COVID policy would be a great way to spur on an economic rebound. It would allow supply chain issues to kind of be resolved, although this wouldn't happen instantaneously, but a more certain outlook for the country's response to COVID could remove a lot of uncertainty and at the same time fear. People fear the unknown and the constant disruptions, testing and lockdowns have obviously hindered China's economy and their faith in the government. The odds may not look great for a rebound, but I still think there are reasons to be optimistic. However, if it does happen and China's economy does collapse, it would cause quite the ripple through the world economy and currency system. If you want to know how the global currency system actually works, check out this video next and thanks for watching.